Hey everyone, this is Louis7, and in this video I will be going over the 64-bit client in the Lord of the Rings Online. So if you're unfamiliar, the new client was released with Update 24, and you do not need to download it separately, it's just a part of the game now, as long as you have your game updated, of course, but you do need to actually enable it to switch over to it from the default 32-bit client. But in this video, I will be covering that shortly, as well as what the 64-bit client does and why you would want to use it in the first place, and I'll also be doing some testing and giving my review of the client. So I will show how it compares to the 32-bit client in a few different situations as well. And also, if you do watch my channel, all of my future gameplay will actually be on the new 64-bit client. But before we get too far into this, I want to just go ahead and show you all how to enable the 64-bit client, and it is actually pretty simple. Alright, so here I am in the Lotro launcher. You actually do see Lotro in the background here on the 64-bit client where I will be testing it later. But if you are in the launcher here, just as the base once you update it and ready to log in, you go to this drop-down menu with this little triangle and then go to the options here. And then at the bottom in the general tab, you will have the game client where you can select the 64-bit client. It says new and beta here because it is actually still a little bit of a work in progress as they're testing things out with it. But you can also choose the 32-bit client or the 32-bit legacy client for like Windows Vista and prior compatibility it looks like but yeah you want to choose the 64-bit client and that's all you have to do then you can log in but unfortunately my username and password for some reason are wrong there so I could not do that but once you're actually in game it will be using the 64-bit client we see here I do have one more thing to point out about the two clients. You have a different set of graphic settings for each client. So now on the 64-bit client, you will have new settings and a new user preference file to go along with that. So that's really nice for me, so I don't actually have to worry about changing settings between the two clients, especially when making videos like this. But yeah, the 64-bit client does have its own set of graphic settings. And moving on, I do want to quickly mention that some of the gameplay in the background now may shift a little bit between the 32-bit and 64-bit clients and up to this point it has only been the 64-bit gameplay and at the top right I will have a little indicator on which client the gameplay is on just so you all know but this is so you all can see the difference while I'm talking about this stuff and I do actually have my in-game FPS tracker on the bottom left and I do play with VSync on so my FPS is limited to 60 so it syncs with my monitor 60 hertz refresh rate and it just results in smoother gameplay that way, even though I might get higher FPS with this disabled. Like, I've been in situations where I've gotten over 100 when I don't have that enabled. But I'll talk more about that towards the end of this video, why I have that. And now we can move on to why you would want to enable the 64-bit client in the first place and what it does. The 64-bit client allows the game to use more resources from your PC, and particularly RAM and video memory, from my understanding. The 32-bit client will be limited to 4 gigabytes of RAM while the 64-bit client can use much more. An issue players ran into with Lotro in the past with the 32-bit client in particular, myself included, is it would occasionally try to go over 4 gigabytes of RAM. When that happened, people would crash. So I experienced this only when playing on DirectX 11, and this is why I always played Lotro on DX9 instead, even though it's like technically worse, I would actually not crash on DX9 is why, but the issue especially happened when traveling between zones, and Minas Tirith I know was particularly bad for some players, so that is a big help here with your computer's RAM. But next up we have video memory, and this just lets Lotro utilize your GPU a little bit more. The biggest effect here as I understand it would be increased performance, and playing the 64-bit client I agree with this because I do see increased performance in the form of higher frames per second. And that is really nice part of the 64-bit client, smoother gameplay and higher FPS, just a lot more smooth all around. So that's really nice and does result in increased performance overall. So I do want to stress that I do see the increased performance, but I have seen some people mistaken the 64-bit client for allowing multi-threading with Lotro. However, it does not inherently do that, and Lotro still doesn't actually utilize multiple CPU cores with the multi-threading, and that would actually also help performance, but it is not in this update. So to sum all that up nicely, as I have been mentioning, the 64-bit client is good, and you will have better in-game performance, and that is why you want to enable it and try it out at least, unless you do run into issues with it. But hopefully the background gameplay is showing that. And one thing I want to point out is I have to record the gameplay, and I use OBS, which can drop my FPS by up to 20, actually, and sometimes even more. So if I were playing everything else the same without that, my performance would be even better than what you see in these videos. 
Before we move in game for another live section, I do want to talk a little bit about my PC so you all know where my performance and marks come from here. So I'm using a kind of old NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970 for my GPU. And since we brought this up, it has four gigabytes of dedicated memory. And I have an i7 7700K CPU, and both of those are factory clocked. And I do have 16 gigabytes of RAM, which honestly isn't enough for me with the editing and some heavy multitasking I get into sometimes. But it is plenty for just playing and streaming or recording Lotro. And I do run Lotro as well on a solid state drive. So that is the uh, same one that has my OS. But that can help with loading times and things like that. And at least with the 32. 2-bit client would help in-game performance a little bit. Okay, so it is finally time to move in-game again and take a look at some of my settings. In the testing here, we will be in the new zone, Bales of Anduin, as we saw earlier, and looking everything over, and then I will switch to the 32-bit client and show the difference and actually talk over that a bit more. All right, so we are in game here on my Runekeeper in the new zone, Veils of Anduin, and unfortunately it just turned nighttime. It's actually still evening, so we can't really see all this area sunlit, but we can still see the vast landscape, and you can see my FPS on the bottom left is at a steady 60 to 62. It's really actually going to be at around 60, but with VSync it'll display that, and it's uh, smooth. You saw a little bit of a hitch there, actually dropped down to 40 when I moved a little bit. And when I spin my camera, you can also see it is about 60 FPS here, a little bit of hitching and stuttering when that person walked by. And if I move my camera really fast like that, it'll go down to the high 40s, it looks like. So that's what's going on with my FPS here. But you can see the landscape is actually pretty nice and has a lot of things going on with it. I think this is a good area. It shows some cluttered stuff. I have the options panel up now, but it shows some cluttered stuff over there where my mouse is and just a lot of landscape and things to see from here. So I thought it was a good spot to show that. And to look at my actual options for where I'm coming from, it says I have custom settings, but I actually go to high. So this is based off the default high settings. And then I also do have anti-aliasing turned up to eight times and I'm running DirectX 11 here. And in the advanced graphics settings, I do change some things from the high. I turn the model detail up to ultra high. I turn frill density down because I cannot stand it at anything really high. Sometimes I even turn it lower than that if it's bothering me. But I do turn the distance for that up because that also bothers me as well if it's just a sharp transition. But other than that, we do have texture detail I turn to very high. I do use high resolution texture data with this game. I have that turned all the way up. I don't know why the filter quality is actually that should always be at 16. I think I was messing with these settings just to make sure they're right for this video and that's why that was off. But yeah, that should be at uh, 16. And the rest of this I kept default for high. I think I do make some minor changes when I'm actually playing with performance here. Uh, with some of these, I will change the texture, cache size, and player crowd quality just to improve performance a little bit. And then you do see I have sync to refresh rate right here on. But that is all the settings as far as this goes. And then we can see the FPS here. I do will will do a little bit more testing with that now. Okay, I have had so many interruptions trying to record this video, but we are back here in game, and I'm going to walk around a little bit. I'm just going to be walking towards the town of Holtbus here on the map. And just walking around a little bit, you do see my FPS drop, and again, I am recording with OBS. When I was not recording with OBS, this was a lot more steady near 60 FPS, but I am dropping a little bit there, and just getting a little bit of stuttering and hitching as I move around and load new things. But overall, this seems really smooth and a lot smoother than I would expect it to be with the 32-bit client, but we will be checking that in a minute. So if I get on my regular mount, we can see how it goes just riding around this area a little bit. A lot of clutter with the trees and shadows and things like that. Unfortunately, it is nighttime, so that's not as present, but it still actually is here. You do see a little bit of shadows. But as we're loading new stuff, you can see I'm still hitching, but then when it's actually smooth, it's going to be more 60 FPS. I do drop a little bit when I turn around and get really cluttered here towards Northern Holtvis, which we're going into now. And you can see my FPS is dropping to be a lot less consistent. It's going down to the 40s and 50s here. Just a lot more clutter and more things to load in this area. It's dropping down. But overall, this is a lot smoother than what I would say the 32-bit client probably is. But we'll try to do the same circle on the 32-bit client and test the difference here in a minute. But yeah, overall, just my impressions from playing here and showing you all this, I'd say it's pretty good. And once I get out here and actually look like more towards the scenery and landscape, it's a very smooth 62 FPS there, really 60 FPS and some random floating rocks here in the red circle. But yeah, I'm just pretty impressed with the way it actually works. Was not expecting it to be this much, but we can go ahead and get on the war steed. That is one thing I know 
that causes performance issues with a lot of stuttering and I think a lot of that will still be the same as your game is still loading trying to load stuff and you're just running really fast so if we run to a new area you can see also my FPS dropping and I had a little hitch there and if I run down this way we can see a little bit of that as I just go down this path and loading new stuff you can see it occasionally drop the FPS and maybe get a little bit of a hitch as I turn my camera there we got a little bit of one but yeah that's how it's going to look on the war scene unfortunately that's still not going to be great but we will test that compared to the 32-bit client and I will go ahead and switch the 32-bit client and just basically do what we did backwards. Alright, so we have switched to the 32-bit client and I'm running the exact same settings except I had to switch down to DirectX 9 but I did the same thing with high and turned the other things up to where they were. And anything that requires DirectX 10 or 11 that was enabled before I cannot enable now so that will be one desk prints. But let's go ahead and turn on the FPS counter and you actually do see it's 62 FPS and if I turn around the camera it is going a little bit lower which was kind of similar but we are not quite in that area yet. So we'll go ahead and accept that quest and move on here to my war steed. So let's do that and not the mount. But if we run through this area and run back up to Holtvis, we'll look at the FPS and actually see there's not too much of a difference until I turn my camera. I'm getting down to the 30s where I was not getting 30s before when I turned my camera that way. So we can see as it gets to really intense parts, the FPS is dropping compared to what it was on the 64-bit client. So even though I was pretty smooth just up here in the mountains where not too much was going on, it is dropping a little bit, especially on my war seed. It's getting really low FPS. I'm dropping to like 20s there for a brief second. And yeah, it's just getting a lot worse and the hitching and stuttering is still here as well. But the FPS, it's a lot more choppy feeling as well. So we'll go ahead and go near this red circle where I was earlier to actually test what it looks like looking around a little bit and you see my FPS is caught up now to 62 but it is a little bit less smooth when I rotate the camera. The FPS counter is actually, it's actually getting a little bit better than it was at first there. But yeah, if I spin my camera really fast, it's getting pretty low. I think about 5 FPS lower. I was getting down to the low 40s compared to the upper 40s when I spin it really fast like that. So there are differences with the FPS there. And even when I look around a little bit at decent speed, it seems to be a little bit lower and just less smooth. So moving around a little bit, we can also see it's kind of similar to the 64-bit client here. But some periods where, especially when I was jumping there, that the FPS would drop down a little bit more than the 64-bit client, just overall less consistent feeling, I would say. Getting on my mount and running here around Holtvis, we got a little bit of hitching there, but yeah, the FPS is overall kind of staying steady, but then it has some issues it seems to run into compared to the 64-bit client. That's where the performance seems to be really improved. If I actually run into Holtvis here, I'm getting down to dropping to like the 50s and 40s. It's pretty similar to the 64-bit client. And I'd actually say there's not too much of a difference, but I am dropping a little bit towards the 30s for a brief second there. It just seems to feel overall less consistent. Hopefully it does show that in the gameplay here, what you all can see, because it is pretty minor differences. You have to actually pay attention pretty hard to see. I would think even the difference between like 40 and 30, but I think the big thing I notice is just the consistency. It's way less consistently high on the 32-bit client. And that's one thing that can bother me. It can make it feel stuttery and just really choppy. And I'm kind of feeling that right now. I dropped briefly right now in the 30s and now it's going back up a little bit. So yeah, just situations like that, it seems like the 64-bit client is doing a lot better. But doing this live commentary, I think it's helpful for me to see a little bit what it looks like. And just to show you all going over it, every little thing I'm noticing, trying to talk through that. And here it's actually getting pretty smooth again, the 32-bit client as I run up here, but then we are having some hitching and stuttering as I move up here. But yeah, hopefully with the gameplay we will be seeing some more differences as well. So yeah, that is the 64-bit client compared to the 32-bit client. As I mentioned, the differences can be pretty small, so you have to pay attention really hard to the detail there and just overall the steadiness of actually playing. Hopefully the video can convey that well, what I was really experiencing and trying to talk through. But overall, the 64-bit client, as we saw, and hopefully have been seeing throughout this gameplay of this video, as I keep mentioning, just has better performance. And to me, it was actually pretty amazing how much of a difference it actually made. So to move into the relatively short review section of this video, my initial reaction, as I've 
said is I'm just surprised how effective the 64-bit client was. The main difference I actually expected going into this was just fewer crashes running on DirectX 11. I didn't really expect my FPS to improve all that much, so that was nice to see how it did and how the consistency especially helped and in some other areas it actually helped a lot more with the FPS overall. So there are no complaints from my end overall, but I feel like I should put a little asterisk here because when I was playing on the beta for the 64-bit client, I had no crashes. But once the live 64-bit client actually came out, there were three specific scenarios I did crash in. And the first two times I actually tried to select items while questing in the Veils of Anduin with the delete key. It was right in the same area, but two different items. And I pressed the delete key and crashed there both times, basically back to back. So it apparently didn't like that because I could try this perfectly fine anywhere else in the zone. Uh, so that was kind of odd. And the other time I crashed was interacting with an NPC for a quest. I turned in a quest and then accepted another quest and I tried to turn around, but in the middle of turning around, I just froze and crashed. That time was a little bit different because I did have a freeze before the crash. The other two times it just went straight black and Lotro exited. So I'm not sure if that's related to DirectX 11 or the 64-bit client because I didn't have similar issues when I was trying to use the 32-bit client on DirectX 11. Usually the crashing would be a lot more random, not necessarily on interactions like that. But I did want to let you all know this because there still might be some fleshing out and just some issues in general since the client is a big change for the SSG end of this. It is brand new and still technically in beta as the launcher says. But anyway, as I've said many times in this video, the 64-bit client overall good and glad it exists and I'm thankful they decided to finally add this even if it seems like they might have been forced to do this with operating systems potentially switching to only 64-bit in the future and dropping 32-bit support. But regardless of that, I still like it and just the consistency with the performance I think is overall a lot better and just a lot nicer feeling. The gameplay feels smoother. So that was uh, pretty long, but the long-awaited client deserved this, I think. And I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you have had any issues with the 64-bit client, you can comment below and we can try to get that fixed. But as I mentioned earlier, it was just released and technically in beta, so it might be a work in progress if you are having issues. And I mentioned this because I have seen some people are having trouble so I thought I would mention that here, even though I haven't had any issues except, I guess, those three crashes I mentioned. But to get back to the outro, if you all did enjoy this, please consider liking and subscribing for more. And I also do now offer channel memberships if you are interested in supporting my content. And thanks for watching, everyone.